Wisconsin is a key swing state in the Democratic playbook. Kamala Harris and Tim Walz even left the Chicago convention this week to hold a packed rally in Milwaukee at the same arena where the Republicans held their convention last month. The margin for victory in Wisconsin has been less than 1 percent for both Biden and Trump in 2020 and 2016. This week, the Wisconsin delegation danced in their cheese heads during the DNC roll call. I ran over to talk to the state's Democratic Party chair, Ben Wickler, about the momentum the party is riding right now. There is unbelievable energy and enthusiasm in every corner of Wisconsin. This is a moment when Democrats are going to shoot not only to, to send Vice President Harris and Tim Walls to the White House, but also to flip House seats, to reelect Tammy Baldwin to the U.S. Senate, to flip our state assembly, which was gerrymandered for so long. You sound fired up and ready to go. Fired up, ready to go, and hoarse from cheering my head off all this week. Everyone was hoarse. They were even uh, handing out uh, cough drops. <laughs> Helpfully. Uh, joining me now is Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Mayor Cavalier Johnson. Mayor Johnson, thanks so much for being with us today. Uh, you spoke at the convention this week. Your reaction to the, just the whole production values and the way people were pumped up. Tell me about it. Oh, my gosh. It was a, an incredible experience to be at the Democratic National Convention, to have the opportunity to see you know, Americans coming together around Kamala Harris's vision for inclusivity for everybody uh, in the country. Uh, I was uh, in Chicago for the convention all week, say for Tuesday when I went back up to Milwaukee for that outstanding rally at Pfizer Forum, the largest gathering uh, of this campaign thus far. And let me tell you, the, the energy, the enthusiasm, uh, the hope is palpable in Milwaukee and across Wisconsin. Uh, is that going to be translated? You know, we've been talking about, is it a sugar high? What are you seeing? grassroots in terms of volunteers. I know the, the money is big, $500 million since, um, you, you, you know, the, the amount of money that they have just done in the last month. But talk about what you're seeing in terms of volunteers, the, organi the organizing, and uh, especially young people. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I can tell you this, that uh, as mayor of Milwaukee, I mean, we're the city of festivals. There are plenty of opportunities to go out and talk to people on the ground, uh, myself, and I continue to go out and knock on doors. And folks are paying attention to this election. They know what's going on. They're asking questions. They want to know what these candidates for high office are going to do to them, or do for them, rather. And uh, when you show them the contrast between Kamala Harris's vision for America and Donald Trump's vision for America, it's a no-brainer. They're voting for Kamala Harris. They need, to, they need to know. They need to continue to be engaged. In terms of the outreach on the ground, there are a ton of organizations that are reaching out to individuals in Milwaukee each and every single day. Uh, there's an organization called Souls to the Polls. There's an organization called Block or Black Leaders Organizing Communities that go out each and every single day mobilizing voters on the ground in Milwaukee. And uh, Kamala Harris's campaign and the Democrats generally have made early and often investments uh, on the ground uh, in neighborhoods across Wisconsin, 40 some offices open all across the state and move the state headquarters to Milwaukee to reach voters that we need to reach uh, for this election. Uh, ben Wickler is pointing out to me that the numbers of people who were in that arena are larger than the margin that Biden will, you know, won by in 2020 of the state uh, in terms of the vote. Let's talk, though, about how you can sustain this and keep that enthusiasm going. You know what to expect. It's going to be a very tough, gritty campaign. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I'll tell you, I mean, there were uh, uh, nearly 20,000 people in Pfizer Forum. My understanding is that there were over 30,000 people that RSVP for the event. So there were, you know, about 10,000 people more than that that couldn't even get into Pfizer Forum that day, well above the margin uh, that uh, presidential elections have been won in 2020 as well as in 2016. Uh, in terms of keeping up the enthusiasm here, yes, certainly there will be a bump, uh, I think, uh, because Democrats are energized after our convention. I think there are some Demo some Republicans and independents, too, who also will be energized. Uh, I think we'll carry this uh, energy on with other rallies and large gatherings uh, across the country into the debate on September 10th. I think the debate will show the true fault time between Kamala Harris uh, and Donald Trump. She's perfectly positioned to prosecute the case against Donald Trump. She will do that uh, in September, uh, and that will give us some extra uh, momentum as we head into the the election this fall.